Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert, and in this video, I want to show you how to spin up a serverless API in Amazon using the serverless framework. So, if you've heard about the buzzword serverless, it's just a way to pretty much run small individual functions on the cloud to do some processing. And you can host like APIs. I think there's stuff I read about hosting like React or Vue or I think Nuxt in a serverless function to have it actually host your UI. So you can do that too if you're interested. So let's just go ahead and get started. I first, uh, the first thing is you gotta do before you even try to run any Amazon stuff on your machine is you need to make sure you have the Amazon command line set up. And if you go to this URL, so amazon.com slash CLI, um, on the right here, you have your different distributions. I went ahead and installed the 64-bit of Windows which is just an installer, you run it and it installs it. And that is going to put a folder here. C program files, Amazon, AWS, CLI v2. So when this folder is created, I did have to go and set up my environment variables. So if you don't know how to do that, you type in env here. You can say edit and set up environment variables. You click edit variables. And then in your path, you click that, and then down here you see that it's pointing to that folder that was created. So you have to be able to do that in order to run CLI commands. So notice down here, after you set that up, you may have to restart your VS Code. Um, but now I can run AWS, and that will actually like spit out some stuff. So we are set up in that aspect. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is a serverless framework we're going to be using. So if you go to serverless.com, on this page they have like different examples. So if you wanted to deploy a view app, you could just, okay, you could just go over here and click on deploy view app and they'll give you some examples. They have like React. But what we're doing is we're going to try to deploy a API um, and I'm going to do it the way that I know. I'm not going to actually use these pre-made things. So let's just go to the docs and follow their instructions here. So if you go to their docs, uh, let's see, is there like a getting started? Here, getting started guide. So the first thing it's going to tell you to do is that you need to install it, the, the serverless framework that is. So you could run this command, npm install g serverless. And that will install it globally so that you can actually run it and deploy your application. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, in a second note, I do have my Amazon uh, account set up and I'm signed in here because we're going to be kind of diving through the UI. So definitely sign up for a free tier account. Um, you have to enter a credit card or debit card or whatever. But you're going to be needing this in order to be able to deploy your serverless functions. So. And we're just going to be deploying a really simple REST API. We are not going to be like connecting to a database. We're just going to have an endpoint or two that returns some JSON or takes in some JSON. And that's about it. You can use your imagination and expand upon the ideas that I'm presenting in this video. And there's tons of tutorials out there as well. But I just want to kind of show you how to hit the ground running with serverless. Just show you that it's pretty straightforward. So once this is done installing, which it just finished down here, you can type in uh, I think it's just serverless. So yeah, type in serverless. And it's going to ask you a couple of questions. It's going to ask you like, what folder do you want to, yeah, do you want to create a project? Yes. What is the project you want to create? I'll say AWS Node.js. What do you want to call this project? I'll say serverless example. Um, that should install or create a folder called serverless example inside of the whatever folder you're in. Uh, would you like to enable this stuff? I'm going to say no. I don't even know what that means. Would you like to set them up now? It says you need AWS credentials to be able to run this. So you could go ahead and say yes. And it's probably going to ask you for credentials, which I haven't created yet. So I don't know why I had to enter twice. So yes, do you have an AWS account? Yes. Please enter to continue after creating your AWS user with the access keys. So that will just go ahead and open up a tab, it looks like, where you can create your user. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. This will create a user with the name serverless with programmatic access. 
Next, I'll go to permissions and I'll give it administration access. I'm going to say be very careful here. If you give your account administration access, it has the ability to create and destroy anything in your account. So with that being said, let's just do it. Um, and then let's go to review, click next, create user. And at some point it's going to give you a access key, which I'm going to make sure I delete before I post this tutorial because I don't want you all creating EC2 instances on my Amazon account. So you can get the access key and over here you can get the secret key. So it says press enter after you're done. You can also download it. I'm just going to download it so I don't forget about it. So I'll press enter and then it's going to ask you what your access key is. So you copy that, paste it in. It's going to ask you what your secret key is. So I will copy that, paste it in. And now it says the credentials are saved to this location. Okay, so we should be good to go, hopefully. And if I were to CD into that serverless example folder and open that folder up in VS Code, By the way, never don't leak these keys. If you leak these keys, anyone can just access your Amazon account. So, all right, so let us give you an overview of what we're doing. So when you create your serverless project, why is it not keeping my thing open? Okay, so when you create your serverless project, um, you'll get a serverless YAML file, and this is where you define like your top level definitions of um, all your serverless resources, how CloudFormation is going to be spun up, if you need any additional CloudFormation resources. But there's a ton of comments here. You can read through them. I suggest you read through them. Um, but I am not going to read through them because this is just too much. So let us just get rid of all this stuff. Um, so th the main thing is when you run your serverless deploy it's going to try to create a bunch of resources if you define them so like for this example sometimes your lambda function needs access to dynamo or access to i don't know an s3 bucket so it's good to define the permissions that your lambda function is going to use here um, on our project we actually do this as a manual step because we don't want our ci cd pipeline creating permissions and roles for us uh, so you can do that, just a good thing to notice. So you can define environment variables here for your Lambda function if you want here. Um, you can exclude and include stuff into your package. Let us just go ahead and get rid of, um, yeah, we need this, okay. Down here is where you define like more resources. Like if you wanted to create an S3 bucket, when you do a serverless deploy, you can do it down here. And all this is, you have pretty much have to look into it because I'm not going to cover it in this tutorial. I'm just going to show you how to deploy the bare bones REST API. So the main thing though is that there is an events, delete all this, there is an events section here in this YAML file and you can tell which endpoint your function is going to call. So let me give you an overview. I have a function called hello and that points to a folder, I mean a file called handler, which happens to be this one here. And then inside that handler file, it points to a hello function. So if I look at that handler file, notice that it exports something called hello. All right, so I could call this my function here. And if I could go back and change hello to my function, and this could be named whatever you want. Um, but as long as the file and the function that's exported inside that file are here, you can successfully deploy that Lambda function. The second thing is you're telling this Lambda function that it wants to be triggered by an HTTP event. This should create you an API gateway where you can actually access your endpoint. So if I were to change this to path, I don't know, hello, and method git, that should deploy a git route at slash hello, and I will show that in a second. So this is our bare bones serverless file that we're gonna be deploying. And inside of this, let's look at this. All this does is it basically returns you a string that says your function executed successfully. And uh, it also outputs what event was passed in. Oh, it says you strict there. All right, so let's just go ahead and try to deploy this. So this is like your baby steps, your first serverless project. Let's just go ahead and deploy it. So if I do this all correctly, I should be able to type in serverless 
deploy. And that is basically going to package up your folder. So like all the contents that are in this folder are going to get put into a zip and placed into a dot serverless folder, which you can see here. So if you see the zip, that basically has my JS file and has my serverless YAML. And then it also has some JSON files that kind of describe your cloud formation template um, and also your serverless state. So if you look here, you can see that it has a ton of stuff already created. I think it tries to create like a S3 bucket and to put the zip onto and then it deploys stuff. So there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that you, when you're starting off, you don't need to know, but at some point you might need to start like learning how the stuff actually works under the hood because you're going to run into issues as your project gets larger and larger. Yeah. So cloud formation is what serverless uses to deploy all your resources. So if I go to cloud formation, if I could type it in formation. All right. While this is trying to deploy, you'll notice that we have a serverless example dev saying status update in progress. Now the dev comes from something called a stage, which happens to be defaulted to dev. But when you do your deploy, you can do hyphen hyphen stage equals, I don't know, prod or stage is equal to uh, QA, whatever you want to do. It's just a way to denote the different environments that you're deploying. Um, and when that is done, it'll give you some information down here. So if you look here, it says that it deployed your service to this stack. There's 11 resources associated with it. And this is the endpoint that you can hit it on. So if I were to copy this link or just control click it, it should open. Yes, let's see. So if you notice here, we actually got back that message and we got back that input. Okay. And all this input is just basically showing you like what you can play around with. So when you get an event from API gateway, this thing, there's different things you can access. You can access your path. You can access your path parameters, your query string parameters, your body, your payload, um, some request context stuff. You get a lot of information when the event comes in in case you need to do stuff with it. Uh, but at this point, the CloudFormation stack is done deploying and you can access your endpoint. So that's how easy it was to get running. It's, it's a lot more configuration, like setting up AWS, getting your credentials, installing serverless, starting your project. Um, but once you get it set up, it's pretty easy to get going. The one thing I will talk about is that there's a lot of serverless plugins. So if you notice that this URL, it's not a custom URL. It's just something that Amazon generates for you and gives you. So if you wanted to use your own custom URL, there's a plugin called like Domain Manager, I think. Uh, so let's see if this is a serverless domain manager. Yeah, so part of the Amplify education, there is a plugin you can use. And if you set this up, you can basically get a custom domain. Like you have to, I think, have your domain already pointing to Amazon, I believe, because you have to point it to a zone. Um, or it might create the zone for you, but let me read through this. Oh. I thought it had something to do with zones. Let me go back. Host is, yeah, we use zones in our project, but maybe you don't have to. But there might be some more steps you have to follow to get a custom domain pointing to your uh, API gateway. So let me show you the other um, things that were created. So second thing that was created, if I go to API Gateway, this was another resource that was created from that serverless deploy. So you notice here you have a dev serverless example with that same ID. So you can dive into that and you can see that it has different paths set up. So if you see here, we have a slash hello resource that takes in a get request. And that basically invokes a function. Okay, so API Gateway is basically what maps your external URLs to your internal Lambda functions. Let's see if there's anything else I can talk, kind of talk about here. Uh, probably not. That's like the, pretty much the overview. Um, the second thing that was created is a Lambda function. So if I go to the Lambda uh, terminal or whatever dashboard, you can see that we have a hello function. So if I click onto this, 
anytime you hit this endpoint, this Lambda function is going to fire off. So if I go to, um, you see our codes here? You can actually see our code if it's not too, too large. Uh, so we have our code. One thing that's nice to know is your monitoring down here. So you can actually see when people access your Lambda. You'll see like a little blue dot when someone tried to hit your Lambda. It tells you how long your Lambda took to run. So this is two milliseconds, any errors, throttling, stuff like that. Just some sport, important metric stuff. And then the third thing that's really important is your CloudWatch log. So whenever this Lambda fun function runs, you know, you might have console logs that need to log out certain things. Oh no, why did I click away from that? Or anyway, so if you go to your log groups, you'll notice that you have a log group already created. Now this log group points to that Lambda function. So whenever your Lambda gets created and runs, it's going to print out some stuff. So you notice here we got a start event for that function, and then we got an end event. And then there's a report saying that everything ran fine. This is how much memory was used. This is how long it took, stuff like that. So those are the main things that were all set up. I think, let's check S3, if there's anything in S3 that got created. Yeah, so it also creates an S3 bucket. This S3 bucket called serverless example deploys or whatever, this is where it basically takes that zip that I was talking about. So over here you have a zip and it uploads it here so that, a lot of folders here, it uploads a zip and also a CloudFormation template so that A, CloudFormation knows what JSON to grab to start deploying your stuff, and then B, Lambda knows what zip to use for your code. So this zip is the one that has like your handler.js file and stuff like that. Um, and I, I'm sure there's other stuff it created, so let's go to IAM. I think when you do a service deploy, it will create a role for you maybe. Let's see. All right, yeah, so, no, I created the serverless one. Let's see. No, okay, so maybe it doesn't create anything in IAM. But you could probably go to CloudFormation and check. So, again, CloudFormation is a infrastructure as code tool that Amazon provides you. But if you dive into it, you can look at all the resources that was created when you did a serverless deploy. So, it looks like it created a Lambda execution. What is this? That's a role. So it did create a role, a Lambda execution role. It created an S3 bucket, a bucket policy, a log group, um, a Lambda version, some Lambda permissions. So it creates a lot of stuff. And as you install more plugins, you'll notice that it creates a ton of more stuff behind the scenes. So that is the gist of it. I mean, you have a endpoint that you can hit now and you returned, it returned some JSON to us, which we saw here. You just have to make sure you stringify it and you return a status code. And you can, you know, if you wanted to do a post request, you just have to go in and change this method to a post. And then make sure you do like event.body to get the body of the post and stuff like that. So it's pretty straightforward to get running. The complicated stuff is behind the scenes, like what's going on in Amazon, what resources is it creating, all that jazz. Um, now the cool thing is after you're done or if you don't want your serverless thing anymore i think you can do a serverless deploy or destroy no i think it's called a remove so serverless remove should probably just delete this cloud formation stack which means that it's going to delete all of those resources that were just created here all right and i'm doing that because i don't want to get charged for um having these resources up especially since this is just a tutorial um, but sometimes you want to blow away your environment and start fresh and sometimes you could do that with serverless remove and I think one of the selling points is if you're using microservices you could have a bunch of these little uh, serverless YAML files for every service and deploy them separately as your microservice changes so let's see did this actually remove it did so my stack if I go here and refresh my stack is gone all right, so my stack is no longer gone. Or sorry, my stack is no longer there. If I go to deleted, you can see the stack was deleted. And then if I go back to all those different like resources like S3, you'll notice that the bucket's gone. Uh, Lambda, that's probably gonna be gone. At least I hope it all is. 
So yeah, we just fully cleaned up our serverless deploy and we can start fresh if we want to. And there is a lot of other stuff that you can figure out and learn. There's like configurations, um, deploying resources manually. Like if you wanted your serverless deploy to deploy a DynamoDB database, you can do that. You can basically have all your stuff managed in one serverless file if you want. Uh, one thing I'll note is that you're gonna hit limits. There are limits to how many things you can deploy with CloudFormation. I think it's like 200 a stack. So as you keep adding endpoints and adding plugins and adding resources and stuff, you're gonna hit um, that Amazon limit, which means you're either gonna have to split up your deploys into multiple serverless files, or you're gonna have to download a plugin called like Amazon serverless split stacks. Uh, both of those solutions are bad in my opinion. I think they should just allow you to deploy a lot of stuff from your serverless YAML, but that's an Amazon limit. So there's no getting around that. So you basically have to kind of modify the way you're doing stuff just to get over that um which is unfortunate but i mean for a small little example project serverless is pretty awesome but as your project is larger we actually moved away from serverless and we're just deploying a a model lambda using terraform and just a a plugin where you can basically have one lambda that takes in all of your git requests post requests and then it kind of routes it internally that's that's another discussion but anyway i hope this overview was helpful. I hope you learned something about serverless and how to deploy an API. Sorry, I didn't deploy more. Like I just deployed one endpoint, but I hope you, you got the idea, right? If you wanted to deploy more endpoints, you just add more functions here, right? Pretty, pretty straightforward. So you can say like, hello two is a different function that calls my other function. And then that's a post request to a hello two endpoint or hello two. You can do like parameters here, I think as well. I forgot the syntax, but you can look that up. So then if someone hits this path of the post request is gonna call other function, other functions not exported yet. So module that exports other function, do some stuff here. Okay. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Again, this is a web dev junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert. If you have any comments, questions or concerns or suggestions of other videos I could make or other things you wanna learn about, be sure to post it in the comments below. If you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be posting stuff like this in the future. All right. Have a good day and thanks for watching.